Is everything okay? No. Down, Down the mountain? What's up, weirdo? Shade Tree Surgeon here, and I am in a pack of 10 idiots. I am one of 10 morons who decided it would be a great idea to take a Sportster, turn it into an adventure bike, and, and get talked into doing this, <laughs> talked into doing these trails. So, uh, is it a good idea? No. Are we all gonna make it out of the woods in one piece? Probably not. Is it gonna be hilarious? Absolutely. I have a confession to make. I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing here. We are somewhere in the hills of Virginia. Mm, I kind of like the sound of that, baby. Look at these rolling green hills. Let me tell you what, Mother Nature is stacked, baby. I guess it's a small comfort, a very small one, but it is a small comfort that I am not the only moron out there. There's at least nine other morons. As the old saying goes, God loves an idiot, but I don't know if he's gonna be able to keep track of 10 of us at once. You know, by the time this trip's over, I'll probably have a whole lot of things that I wish I had done differently. <laughs> Just because I'm sure it's a, uh, if things all go according to plan, that would be the most shocking thing I could possibly imagine. I can't imagine what's going to go wrong. I can just imagine that it will. But so far on the way up here, the one thing that I would have changed is I would have got a 1200 Sportster instead of an 883. The 883, I mean, it's, it's fine, but man, just especially in Florida, it's really fine. But once you get out of Florida and you get into these rolling hills and stuff like that, you're shifting a lot. And you just are constantly trying to keep it in the power band. Uh, if you're going uh, 65, 70 miles an hour and you want to pass somebody, pack a lunch, okay? I originally got an 883, both because this one just came up and it was cheaper, but I kind of wanted one because I thought the gas mileage was gonna be better. And then I didn't really ask anybody if that was actually the case. And everyone after I bought this goes, uh, actually an 883 and a 1200 get pretty much exactly the same gas mileage. I was like, well, I got it now. So, oh well. Every time somebody has to stop and check the directions, it just makes me feel better about getting lost all the time. I'm, I'm just like, take your time, dude. I got nothing but patience for this because I personally require a lot of patience from people. I am super glad somebody else is in charge of the directions. I would have done it if they had asked me to. I don't know how I would have done it, but I would have done it just really poorly. Oh my God. And it's already absolutely gorgeous. Can you freaking believe this? It's like we're at the freaking Ewok village right now. Come on, baby. What was the name of the planet? Rondor Endor. We're on the moon of Endor. <laughs> That's what it freaking feels like, dude. I feel like like an AT-AT -AT walker is about to come bursting out of the woods at any moment. And we're on the speeder bikes right now. This is freaking amazing. Oh. Tim from Gigastat. Thank you, dude. <laughs> and this is what I'm saying. <laughs> you can have an adventure on anything. Here I am on a $1,500 bike. And sure, I've done about $2,000 in modifications to it, but I didn't even have to do that. I could have just left it a $1,500 bike as evidenced by our friend up there, cool beans on the stock 883. Back in Tennessee, baby. All right, are we leaving the road? Is this, is this the our intrepid journey beginning? These brave explorers, 10 enter the woods. How many will leave? And 10 Harley Davidson Sportsters <laughs> traverse a trail from Virginia to Canada almost and make it win one piece. Something tells me this is very doubtful, but <laughs> here we are.
it's out of a freaking movie, baby. Alright, first leg done. I mean, see if my luggage is still, uh, still attached. Well, so far so good. Um, these guys ain't doing so hot. <laughs> How'd that thing feel on the gravel, man? Oh my god. You get... I, it looked like it, dude. I was following you. I was like, dude, you fucking did it, though. So far, so good. Of course, it's just really just a gravel road. I feel like, obviously, there's guys out here on stock Sportsters, and you could do this on a stock bike, I think, and not even an off-road bike, pretty much. You just might have to go a little bit slower if you're on, like, a bike that's really not supposed to be off-road. Oh, my gosh, man. I feel like we're on a freaking movie set. What is this? <laughs> and what have, have these walls ever echoed with the sound of 10 V twins? <laughs> these hallowed forests reserved for KLRs and BMW GSs. We're defiling, we're defiling them with oil leaking v, American V twins. Of course, you know, uh, 50 years ago, I bet there was probably a lot of sportsters on these trails because that's all you had to ride. 50, 60 years ago, there was no such thing as a dirt bike. There was just bikes. All of a sudden, as I'm getting sprayed with water here, I realized that maybe goggles would have been a good idea. Our first trip through the woods unscathed with some authentic spray on mud to impress all the ladies when we get to the bar. Oh, all the, all the high vis adventure boys, ADB boys out here going, what the hell are, what the hell are air cooled American V twins doing defiling our pure forests? Wow, man. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. I'm sure we haven't even seen the half of it yet. That was just 26 of the most amazing miles. <laughs> Some of the most amazing miles I've ever seen. If I did this entire trip and just rode that, I'd be freaking amazed and happy. We got 975 more miles to go. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. It's a little sportser that could, baby. <laughs> These big old hills ain't exactly its friend. I don't think I'm gonna be setting any records up Pike's Peak with this thing. God. I'm officially getting to see more of Tennessee than I've ever seen. If we're still in Tennessee, I guess we could be in West Virginia. I really have no idea. Oh, well, Tennessee or West Virginia, whichever one it is, just an absolute wonderland for a motorcycle. I tell you, you know, I might, I might be lamenting the 883 when we're on an open highway and climbing hills and stuff like that, but for these little twisty back roads like this, Dude, the 883, and this is basically stock. Essentially, pretty much a stock 883. And that's some minor stuff to undo it. But, you know, for these, like, little back roads like this, like these little, if you, as long as you keep it in the right gear, third or fourth gear, I mean, you, you're not going fast enough to get out of third or fourth gear, or at least I'm not anyway. So, the, the 883, totally fine for this stuff. Now, when I attempt the Trans-American Trail and I start going out west, of course, I might have to put a 1200 kit on it just for this, the hill climbs out there. Of course, I say that, but then, like, it, how much cooler would it be to do it on an 883? Like, like, nah, no upgrade, no engine upgrade. Screw it, let's send it. 883 time. Uh, we'll see what I did. I was keeping it in a pretty high gear there, so we'll see how, what kind of gas mileage we're getting on this thing. That's an extra one for the ladies. It just wants to go. That's the problem, man. Didn't want to be turned off. Dude, I just pulled out the, the thing to do some, the film, the thing, the camera, to do some filming. And Adam goes like, yeah, my entire test ride on this bike before I came here was a mile around the campground. I feel like I've really got some test riding in a groom then. Your bike looks cooler with dirt on it. My bike just keeps getting uglier and uglier. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, although, you know, like they say, someone's always got a bigger dick, right? There's always a bigger fish. 
Hey, in this group, somebody's always got an uglier bike. <laughs> How was it on the... It was fucking a little squirrely, but that's what it's supposed to be, right? I got it. I got to get up there. I want to get up with you guys so I can get video. I want to get video of Adam and video of you. Yeah, it's... Because that looks... Crazy. I got to imagine it looks wild. <laughs> <laughs> How's the Buell? Like it's home. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I bet the suspension is so freaking good on it, though. So it's like it's got a... It's you know six inches stock, so... Of travel? Yeah. Oh, never mind. You're fine. <laughs> You're fucking fine. <laughs> Tim comes up six inches stock. But I measure I measure butt to tip, okay? <laughs> we do it in Florida. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I measure butt to tip. They call me the tuna can, baby. <laughs> Damn, dude, this thing sounds good. Once again. Adam was so kind and he gave me a microfiber cloth to clean my freaking helmet. And once again, I hopped on the bike without cleaning my drop down visor. Still covered in bug guts. I love it with that freaking bike. That bike right behind the stock, 88, the stock Sportster up there. I don't even know if it's 883, it might be a 1200 with the ape hangers off-road baby adventure bike with ape hangers why the hell not uh oh <laughs> the 883 is eternal nemesis <laughs> a hell Sportsman isn't exactly the, uh, I will say, the world's best hill climber here. <laughs> We're doing our damnedest, though. We're giving it the old college try. The the screaming beagle, the 883. Come on, baby. Up and up and up. goes up must come down I imagine uh, we're gonna be coming down through some cool stuff downhills I can handle this a little bit better <laughs> not quite as much shifting on the downhills <laughs> although they're getting so tight definitely gonna be doing a lot of shifting the problem with the 883 is it's just got no torque compared to a 1200 and first gear i had no idea this is the first sportster i've ever owned first gear on sportsters is so freaking tall definitely not made to go off-road most off-road bikes have a incredibly short first gear one thing i just got to be careful with which is why i'm mr cool beans here cool beans chris i'm very glad i'm following him with his 11 inch burly slammers in, this, in these turns because he's keeping me honest right now. Because yeah, this this bike is so tall, my Sportster is so tall right now, before I scrape anything hard, uh, you know, it would you would have to be leaned over so freaking far. And I would run out of talent and the t rubber would run out of grip long before I ever hit a hard part. So <laughs> my man in front of me here, my man Cool Beans Chris over there who will drag parts pretty quickly He's, uh, he's definitely helping me keep the ugly side up back here. Ooh, definitely don't want to go off one of these, man. You go off the side here, and you're going for a ride. As, there, as we go through that turn, and there's a cross, a freaking cross right at the apex of that turn. Exactly. Oh shit! <laughs> I was wondering what that sound was. <laughs> um, hold on, I got some duct tape. Just let it dangle. I kept hearing something. I was like, is my bike knocking? Oh shit, I still have the freaking hardware. Hell yeah. Now the question is, does anybody have any Loctite? It, it lasted the whole way here, so I figure if I just tighten it up again, it should be fine. And I knew I was gonna forget to Loctite something on this damn bike. I was gonna go dip my head in that water, but I ain't now. <laughs> yeah, luckily I put the dual headlight one on, so if I had lost one, well, I could have just repositioned the high beam. Back on the road again. 
Oh my gosh. Hey, you know what? If that's the only thing that breaks on this whole trip, it won't be. Something else will break. But if that was the only thing that broke on this whole trip, I'm doing pretty damn good. For a rigid mount sportster that vibrates everything loose like it's its job. I just realized I wasn't recording that whole thing. And what we went through was, it wasn't gnarly, but it was the gnarliest stuff we'd been through so far. And my man up here did the whole thing with his 11 inch burly slammers. Well, I'm recording now, so <laughs> you just have to take my word for that one. You don't have to put long travel suspension. My man here doesn't even have freaking bags. He's just got a freaking sack and a bungee cord, you know? Just if you're not gonna have any of that other stuff, you're gonna roll out here on a freaking Sportster with 11 inch burly slammers and ape hangers. You just gotta make up for the rest of the stuff with balls. And I think my man Cool Beans Chris here has got those in spades. Balls are stupid. You know, I never can tell the difference. The story is becoming less and less about how I built a Sportster <laughs> to go off road and be an adventure bike and how my man Chris here just went on a stock Sportster. Come on. Oh shit, that's a big old snake. Looked like he was ready to strike at something. <laughs> on the slammers, man, with the apes. I love it. Dude is a freaking legend. Watching you go through that stuff will never get old. That was freaking. That's fucking hilarious, dude. I was talking about it the whole time. I love your adventure gear. <laughs> oh no, I almost lost my pickle. Not the pickle. It's my emergency pickle. Oh yeah, no, you were catching air. You were freaking, that ass end was just jumping right in the air, dude. I, I love it because I, cause I used to be like this too. I'd be like, oh, I'm not going anywhere or doing anything unless everything's perfect, unless I got all the right stuff. That's like, nah, man, just go. It's it's inspirational, man, and on the channel people will see that. I love that. I thought mine was low dough. I was like, I'm gonna build mine for cheap. <laughs> not sponsored by Van Holtons yet, but we're working on it. I love it. It's it's real. I'm not doing it for the camera. <laughs> no, good for you, man. <gasps> so sour. So let me tell you, the biggest drawback right now, besides it being an 883, I definitely should have sprung for the 1200, is these pegs. When I look at my man over here. Bad Fish Customs, who just is like <laughs> done the deal right here. That is freaking cool, man. You know what? It's, uh, if you need practice, you ever think about making a second set just so you're really good at it? I'll test them out for you. <laughs> if you want a weight test on them, you know? <laughs> you want a weight test on them? I got you. <laughs> oh, you got to prepare to get on this thing. On the road again, baby. Our 10 intrepid explorers, still intrepid, still number 10. The Milwaukee Madman. Can you believe it, baby? Of course we can. These roads are, they're, they're not that difficult. But still, still, well, let's, let's make it, let's make it a little more exciting, all right? Oh my God, gorgeous. Up and up and up we go. <laughs> the hill climb, the hill climb champs, baby. shout out to everybody who said my block of wood wouldn't hold up. Well, here I am. That is a Costome original 2x4 underneath this seat. There was no way it wasn't holding up. That was pretty dumb. If the guy with sock suspension can make it through without putting a leg down to paddle, I think you should be able to, Josh. <laughs> Sorry, not stock suspension, specifically lowered suspension to make it even worse. Dude, and that one was even better than the last one. That was fucking awesome.
And just like that, we're back in these beautiful twisties again. You know, I, I knew that the MADBR barbecue LOL of WTF and the Trans American Trail, I know that portions of it, large portions of it, are paved like this, but I will tell you, if it was all off-road, I think I would enjoy it less. I mean, trust me, I'm absolutely loving the off-road stuff, but I love street bike riding too, man. I love riding on pavement. I love the twisties. So getting to jump back and forth from both just like multiple times a day, I'm going to tell you guys, I actually really, really dig it. A man here at Bad Fish Customs up there, he went all out on those freaking foot pegs, man. And he says it's as easy as he's got them like right as close as you could possibly get it to the pivot point of the swing arm, which is where you want them. And man, I want to try it. He said he can stand up in that thing all freaking day long. As easy as a dirt bike. And he is proving it, man. My man freaking, my man Bad Fish Customs has not sat down since we got out here, which is really how you should be doing it. Because standing up should be like a really easy neutral position if the pegs and everything is set up right. They're just definitely not set up right on these uh, other stock mounting locations for mid controls on a sports shirt. They're just a little bit too far forward to really stand up comfortably, especially if you're doing anything like going uphill. like mud on a dirt bike so I definitely am slowing down for that shit <laughs> that was a big one <laughs> oh Florida boy ain't used to these rocks baby I freaking take you by surprise love it uh oh he's facing the wrong way you all right brother yeah I'm all right just looking for the saddlebag I was, I was like, that motherfucker's gone. I thought for sure, I was like, uh-uh, you ain't finding that shit. I'm glad you're okay, man. What happened here? He hit some leaves. Oh, that's right, I should probably check some oil. No, I don't want to check it. I might get bad news. Do it. <laughs> no, I don't check it, man. <laughs> no, uh, that way it's, Schro it's Schrodinger's oil, dude. It's both completely empty and completely full at the same time until I look at it. So I told this motherfucker absolutely no whiskey because Adam put me in the freaking hurt locker last night with Jameson. And he go and I go. He goes like, no, we have to, we have to. And I was like, not a fucking chance. And he, then he busts out. The brothers don't let brothers wander the dark alone flask. And I'm like, <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. I absolutely can't take it at all. <laughs> Tastes like last night. <laughs> oh man, you know what? I immediately feel better. That was a good idea. Yeah. I knew you would. I don't think you're right. That, that all, oh. <laughs> well, I mean, Jordan has my phone number. I, I assume he would have called. I don't know. All right. Well, we're missing a couple people. So me and Adam have been waiting for about 15 minutes and haven't seen him yet. And people ride at their own paces. So that's not terribly weird that they're back in the back. But been waiting long enough that they should have gotten there. So me and Adam are going to go uh, do a little bit of backtracking and make sure everybody's okay. This is the part of the horror movie where we split up. Oh, there they are. Yo! So we were just coming back to look for you. We're right, we're right up there. That was a very short-lived, uh, short-lived rescue mission. Like literally, we just pulled away like maybe 500 yards and they were right there. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta pay attention where I'm going, but wow, what a view. over here again and uh, I will tell you I might have had a prettier view but you can always say you had a prettier view but the prettiest one's always the one right in front of you so if I've had a prettier view than this I don't remember when it was I had to say goodbye to one member of the pack <laughs> hey at least I wasn't the last person on <laughs> I also don't have a horn. 
One guy went down, might have broken his ankle. He's not sure yet. He was walking, kind of walking. Uh, so he was able to just get, we went out to a road here, was able to get on the road. He's gonna head to the next hotel and stop by and get some bandages and see how he feels in the morning. Fingers crossed, man. Definitely a bummer, man. Makes me wish I brought my motocross boots because, let me tell you, he was wearing motocross boots and he still might have broken his ankle. And it, since we're on freaking uh, Harley Davidson's, we're on Sportsters, it makes everything feel like, to be honest, it makes everything feel like a little more low stakes, but we're still going 30 miles an hour off road. That's fast enough to really hurt yourself. They were so pleasant. A couple of girls hiking the Appalachian Trail stopped by and talked to us. And they were just like the nicest people. These roads, these roads. I don't know why in my head, like I was saying earlier, I was kind of like, not bummed out, but like probably like a little bummed out that, uh, you know, it wasn't all off road when I found out that the Trans American Trail and the ADBR, I was like, oh, it's not all off road. There's paved sections. I was like, what the hell is all that about? But. Dude, these roads are so freaking good. I I wouldn't want it. I wouldn't want that. I wouldn't want to miss these roads for anything, man. They're fucking amazing. Something was scraping. I don't know what it was, but something. It's just like wild. This is just wild. All these sports are just like bombing down these country roads, all with like adventure gear and knobby tires and the whole freaking deal. Just this pack of, pack of Harleys like People keep doing double takes. They see the bikes and just from a distance, they all look like adventure bikes. When they go by, it just sounds like a like a biker gang, you know? And everyone's freaking looking twice. It is so freaking funny, man. We've gotten asked more questions by people than you would believe on this trip. Every time we stop, people are walking up and going like, just what the hell did you do to those sportsters? A lot of people are going like, does Harley sell those? We're like, ah, yeah, the Pan America, but you can build your own too. This is officially the longest stretch of straight road I've seen since we've been riding. <laughs> it's like, and it's only been a couple miles long. That just tells you this, this guy, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, it's just a freaking playground for motorcycles. Eh, or fast cars, whichever you like. Beefy boys. Well, I guess we're beefy boys right now too. Are we high biz dads or are we beef boys right now? Somewhere in between, I don't know what we are. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm completely dead. I think it's something in the switches or the relay. All right, well, big thanks for Jordan here and his moral support. I had to, ended up being my negative battery terminal, so ended up being an easy fix, which I am thankful for. Once again, if that's the worst thing that happens, we'll be doing pretty good. Yo, Adam, can you drop me a pin at the gas station? I just, I got the bike fixed. Yeah. Maybe it's two, I don't know, but it's not fun. All right, cool, cool, see ya. No fucking way. It just it just did it. It's got to be a bad connection, man.
You can go. I'm gonna have to take it apart again. You can go ahead, man. <laughs> the same exact thing happened again, which makes me think that um, it's not really the battery terminal connection. Even though it did feel a little loose, it's probably some other wire in there is grounding out. I'll have to take a better look at it later because kind of just pulled the battery out, fiddled with it again, and now it works. Everybody's waiting for me up at the gas stop. <laughs> oh, what a pain in the butt. But it is a 20 plus year old Harley and that's why you bring tools. So onward and upward. <laughs> and hopefully it doesn't do this every time I try to start the bike. Success. <laughs> All right, a few of the boys are pulling off to the hotel, but even though my bike is intermittently starting, I'm gonna attempt the rest of the trail. <laughs> intermittently starting, intermittently not starting. What's the difference though, right? Uh, now, uh, now Chicken Rick's bike is doing the same thing. At least I'm not alone. Battered and bruised, but on the road again, baby. Can't keep a Sportster down. Come on. I don't know if attempting the, the bike that is kind of not starting and might be intermittently cutting out is the best idea, but this whole thing was a bad idea. So, hey, man, what's one more? Did Adam and them pull off? I didn't see him leave either. Well, I'm pretty sure I actually followed the group that's going back to the hotel and not the group that's going on the do the rest of the BDR on the way to the hotel. But whatever, we've got plenty more sections for the next four days, so I'm kind of bummed out because I'm like, oh, I love taking sketchy equipment on places it shouldn't go, but hey, whatever, man. I ain't going to cry about it. That just means I get to get to the beer faster. Uh, I thought these guys were going back to the hotel, but if this is the way back to the hotel, I am not complaining. This is freaking gorgeous so gorgeous like pay attention josh <laughs> it's, a, it's a hard when everything's so pretty what happened bud it just died oh <laughs> i wonder why you're not charging what your skaters are your regulators unplugged or your skaters unplugged here right? it's unplugged yeah huh. so here's the suck part it's how do we get voltage into your bike get it started then it'll start charging i've got a i've got a jump pack oh you do yeah why didn't you tell me to shut up like three minutes ago? I don't know, man. You got a nice voice. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, I'm like, I should have checked the regulator to make sure it was plugged in. Uh-huh. like, yeah, my man Ricky already checked it out. He actually unplugged it because he was like, fuck that regulator. He can't be regulated is what it is. Don't even try. All right, try it again. Cool. Ah. Hell yeah. Now stall it out immediately. <laughs> I was shitting my pants the whole time. I'm like, why did I have to pop start it? All right. Well, hopefully that's the last time we got to bust out the tools today. Officially back at the hotel, or about back at the hotel. At the hotel, we've got beer. Everybody made it. Adam and them just got back, and I missed the turn off with them. They come back being like, "We saw a bear, and it was the coolest thing that ever happened." I'm like, "I'm like, yeah, fucking right." No, I don't want to be proven wrong. I don't like being proven wrong, Adam. Oh, right there, huh? Anyway, let's fucking eat. Well, I got left behind besides everybody else but Jordan. <laughs> my knight in shining armor over here anyway the bar is only a mile down the road but i never know where the hell i'm going let me tell you what jordan we're gonna make a great team because you're exactly as prepared as i am unprepared <laughs> that doesn't really do anything for you you know but it does a lot for me let's see what bars are like in small towns in west virginia Apparently it's some place called The Rail. I don't know anything about it. I think Tim from Gigasat Cycles picked it out. But you know, me and Tim, I uh, kind of feel like we're cut from the same cloth, baby. Oh, they weren't kidding. It is right down the street. All right, The Rail Bar and Grill, man. Let's see what this place is all about. Oh, I, I already like it from the, from out here, man. It's like a, a used to be a house, but they took all the windows out my kind of place all right jordan you ready to get fucked up or what dude let's see what this place is like 
<laughs> called the rail. The rail? Yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. If you called a bar the rail in Florida, <laughs> you'd be talking about something entirely different. Me and Jordan Ray, because he waited for me, so we actually sacrificed. We got relegated to the kids' table. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you got, we got crayons over here, nerds. All right, fucking losers. The beer is cold. The food looks good. The burger I got is called the main line. I just want one. I want a main line burger with a side of free base fries. <laughs> You're from Ohio, you know about that shit. Don't be don't pretend to not know about drugs when you do. <laughs> Dang, what you got up there at the grown ups table, man? No, but I am like we're in we're in Lots of bacon, let's see yours. Ooh, they give you the butt. Lucky make a wish. <laughs> okay, by the way, if I ever turn up missing, check Jordan's fucking basement first because this motherfucker just ordered his burger with no cheese. And an obvious psychopath. <laughs> it's already full. At a mainline burger, uh, unfortunately, it'll make a turd. I don't know. There's just something like absolutely so sketchy about seeing this many crappy sportsters leave the same place. Like someone alert the authorities. Yo, there's a meteor shower tonight. Oh hell yeah. So we picked up a, another one. I was so worried about. Holy crap. Really dirt biking it with the freaking side stand, dude. He's got the race stand. I love it. But with the the plastic tank, which I wanted to do so bad. Oh hell yeah. It's got the freaking. It's got the LA lights freaking uh, chain tensioner. That's freaking phenomenal, man. I love it. I wanted to do a plastic tank so bad. I just am stupid, so I couldn't figure out how to get one on there. Phenomenal. This one looks, it looks really like a dirt bike. Hearing all these things running at the same time <laughs> and knowing that we're headed to dirt trails and not just down the road is a special kind of exciting. Virginia and West Virginia, man, they're just, <laughs> there ain't a mile of boring road out here, that's for sure. Well, it didn't take long getting the gravel right away. Apparently today's starting out like that. <laughs> Better pay attention out here. It's uh, the gravel road themselves. It's not that bad, but there's some big ass holes in it. Come on now. No, that's not the best sign, but uh, fingers crossed. Ugh. Gorgeous, man. It's immediately transported to where it's like, dude, besides the road, there's not a single sign of man out here. It's transported into this freaking ethereal wonderland. Adam, you all right? He's got one of them DJI Osmos. The thing's really gonna be put to the test now. Falling off a motorcycle onto a gravel road at 35 miles an hour. It sounds like a test to me. <laughs> Just to show you that, yeah, none of these are really that bad. There is also, and we're about to a passer, uh, because it's not going too fast, but there is also a uh, a completely unmodified for dirt Dyna on this trip. Well, not on this leg of the trip. I don't think that Whiskey Eye is going to do the whole thing. getting rocky up here. Again, you could do this on a stock Sportster. It's being done on a stock Sportster. It's being done on a stock Dyna. Well, stock suspension wise. Well, the Sportster's lower. <laughs> but, uh, you just have to go slower. So uh, with our modifications, we get to have a little bit more, f well, it's all fun, but we get to get, be a little spicier with the throttle. Dad. 
definitely got to be looking ahead for those potholes, though, because this front suspension is pretty damn good. <laughs> but uh, once again, my constant bitch, those burly stilettos. Great. Fine for the street. They're fine street shocks, like, you know, and they definitely give you the ground clearance you need, but not made for this kind of stuff. Can you do it? Absolutely. So they're better than nothing. They're sort of, I would say that they're better than the 11-inch burly slammers, that's for sure. These downhill sections, this is sketches me out more than anything. Falling going up, not a problem, because you usually stop pretty fast. Falling going down, you, you're moving for a while. What's crazy about dirt bikes and front brakes is, you know, everyone says don't use your front brake, and you got to be especially careful with your front brake on a downhill. But I'll tell you, going downhill, your rear brake does almost nothing because you're already freaking leaning forward. You've already got weight off that rear tire. It is really just pretty much front brake going downhill. You just got to be extra careful. Again, why I wanted the Brembos. Although, as you can see with everybody else on this trip, they were not necessary. But you could have done it with absolutely stock Harley brakes. I still love that I did it. <laughs> I'm still just going to tell you, I still love that I did it. Dude, these trails are freaking amazing, man. If I had a dual sport, shit. <laughs> but guy, this Harley, if I lived out here, I'd say I'd be on all these twisty roads all the time. I'd be on this thing, too. I imagine that this gets like washed out and so freaking ruddy in the rain. Luckily it hasn't rained in a minute, so we got pretty damn good roads. I'm not seeing really any washouts or ruts. A few here and there. They'd be especially treacherous on these downhills, I think. Which is also where they're most likely to happen. And again, like we said, <laughs> just coming up on Cool Beans Chris <laughs> on, this, on the stock Sportster with burly slammers, baby. What a champion. Dude, that was fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, and this shit. This is like magical, dude. It's like we're in some kind of fairyland. This is damn fairyland, man. And that thing still works. I was like, that's the test, dude. If that thing still works flying off on a gravel road at 35 mile an hour, bouncing about 100 times, I'm buying a DJI Osmo, all right? <laughs> I, I don't think she knew that this was going to go immediately off road. <laughs> She did it though! <laughs> Hell yeah! By hook or by crook! We are going up and up and up. <laughs> Not the sportster's favorite. Down, it loves. Up. Mm, it's struggling. Nice. Right back to dirt.
lot of time for talking in this one. Definitely concentrating. But just because I'm concentrating <laughs> on high alert and not talking doesn't mean I'm not having an amazing fucking time. This is awesome. Fucking another good one, dude. That was awesome. Doing again. Fuck. And, um, I lost my shift peg. Your shift peg? Let's see what we got. If we can make something work. Saying maybe I got something or I don't know. There's always something. I might be able to take something off that I can lose a bolt on. All right. Well, uh, big up to Adam for completely still keeping up with everybody with no shifter. <laughs> I was like, I was like, dang, Adam's fucking ripping out there. And he has no shifter and his clutch isn't working properly. <laughs> I still feel like a punk. She rolls up on a damn dino. Just I know, I know. <laughs> hey, you know, if we're feeling like punks, we're doing all right, man. It's, a, it's when you start to feel cool, that's when you get hurt. <laughs> as long as I'm feeling like an idiot, I'm doing okay. Trails great, man. Oh, dude, are you kidding me? A gigastat cycles. This has to be on here. I had a bunch at home. I just forgot to put one on there. Oh, you got that? Hell yeah. I'm so glad. Dude, that's my favorite battery pack. I can't believe you found it. Yeah. You probably, I don't know who you want. I was like, I saw it bounce out. I was like, well, it belongs to the woods now. <laughs> Dang, hell yeah. This is how long I've had it. Look at that sticker. It looks like it's part of it now. Very cool. I made my day. All right, crisis averted yet again. On any more crises we can actually avert. Oh, quite a few. There's there's some crafty people here, which is very lucky for me because I am a moron. But it seems like everybody else is pretty smart, so I'm just gonna go ahead and lean on that. Probably should have pissed, but oh well. <laughs> well, you know, those look like they'll dry out fast. Dude, I've a hundred percent pissed a bunch of times during races. I just stand pissed a bunch of times during races, like hair scrambles. Just stand up and fucking piss, dude. Not I wouldn't want to do it here. <laughs> You tell me you ain't fucking been in like some thunderstorm right down the road, just stood up and took a piss when you were on the road, never once. Try it. back in Florida with all this dust. Shit. Well, I just lost a peg. <laughs> Let's see if I can make this work for the rest of the freaking trip till we stop again. <laughs> I literally just hit a big old stick and it turned my peg upside down. I can still kind of hang my foot on it. I definitely am not standing up. Them 1200s will kick up some gravel, all right? <laughs> you be careful. I had a freaking duck behind my windshield here.
see if I can fix this. Literally, as soon as I freaking, uh, as soon as we got into the trail, I hit a rock or something, it went up and freaking turned my foot peg upside down. So it's just flopping down. So I just did that whole thing without, <laughs> without my left foot on the foot peg. <laughs> I think I can put it on there a little bit. Okay. I'm gonna actually have to get a wrench out for this. Well, I got my peg fixed. <laughs> Crisis number 36 avoided. Although nothing's really been that bad, man. This whole trip has just been, I mean, I freaking, I really feel bad about Rick breaking his ankle, but man, that was such a bummer. He's a really cool dude. I got to talk to him a little bit and uh, just a really, really super nice guy. But other than that and Adam's clutch, which I, I think it's the, I think it's the spring plate and that's what Shelby thought too, but. Adam, unfortunately, it's getting worse, so he is going to have to end up taking it to a Harley shop. So I think he's going to break away at some point today. That's a real bummer, too, because I love hanging out with Adam. He's a, I, I would say, has become a very good friend of mine. You know, we started out as like, hey, I like this guy, and did a couple things together, and it's at the point now where I consider Adam Sandoval to be a close friend of mine. The same with Jordan Ray. You know, just good people that I'm good friends with that I've happened to have met up with a bunch of times all around the country, and uh, now I've just met you know, 10 other people like that too. All these guys, Chicken Rick and freaking Cool Beans Chris, Tim from Gigastad, like all, I'm forgetting people's names. All the boys out here, man, they're all cool people. And I can't, it's just like building that community of motorcyclists across the country that where, whenever I'm in a new city, I can just be like, hey man, I wonder what my man who lives in this city is up to today. And I freaking love that. Absolutely gorgeous road. It's really truly amazing how freaking easily these uh, these blocky tires handle the corners. Whiskey I go on her dyna up there. <laughs> did all the same roads we just did on a freaking stock dyna, baby. Why the hell not? Her and Cool Beans Chris, man, they're the heroes of this story. <laughs> we are out in the middle of freaking nowhere now. <laughs> I'm amazed there's another car, even a car out here. It's freaking wild. Dude, hell yeah. All right, back in the dirt mindset. That's what's wild about going back and forth. You just gotta like completely, not completely switch your way of thinking because it's not like we're racing hair scrambles out here, but you gotta turn a lot of things back around just in an instant, going from freaking uh, dirt to gravel to rocks to asphalt to everything like that, man. It's really challenging and it's really a lot of fun. You know, I'm starting to think there might be something to this whole adventure bike thing. Definitely don't want to get in that rut there. That's what I was talking about earlier with washouts, man. I'm so thankful there hasn't been any rain because it's this dirt, it just seems like it'd be so susceptible to getting big, big ruts from rain in it. Ooh. Gotta keep my distance on this trail, there's just a lot of freaking dust. That was a big one. Oh, 
Another one. Dang, dude. Oh, it's soaking them up. Well, the front is anyway. The rear, not so much. Oh. That would suck to go through. Well, I probably wouldn't make it through it, honestly. <laughs> I probably would have washed out right away. Oh, speaking of, God, be careful. I'm having so much fun flying through this, but it's like, man, there's some treacherous stuff around the corners. All oh, treacherous for this bike, anyway. I'm getting closer and closer to losing my stuff. But so far, it's all still there. Here is if you bump the tire pressures down about 15 pounds. You losing your front end too? Oh, a yeah. little bit, yeah. Yeah. I'm just afraid because I didn't run tubes about fucking pulling the bead off. So I'm just leaving mine up and just dealing with the squirrely front end. That was fucking awesome. That was really good. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Well, that's the thing. We all got these big beer bellies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, see? Yeah. <laughs> all right, so like all that and all those potholes that I was bitching about, I was like, boo fucking who, these burly slammers and their two inches of suspension travel. <laughs> yeah, I got to stop bitching as soon as Chris gets here. <laughs> 11 inch, 11 inch stock. 11 yeah. Inch stock. <laughs> all right, we got all these bikes out here. And then, of course, <laughs> that. And uh, what we just did, where you might have been like, oh, that's when uh, the people with stock bikes would have turned around and gone home. Well, not exactly. <laughs> no, it was only like 20 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, which I don't blame you, dude. I can't believe you made it up it. That's wild. <sighs> All right, another crisis averted. We just had a carburetor off, uh, <laughs> among other things, <laughs> and boiling gas and uh, all sorts of fun stuff. But we were managing to make it out. We can't make uh, it's the. I'll, I'll be right behind you. Yeah, it's Bad Fish Customs. It's his bike. It's such a cool bike. But he's having some issues with his carburetor. Well, the problem is, is it just will not stop dumping fuel. Uh oh. <laughs> Here, let me. I'll give you a hand, man. You got it? I'm rolling, and when I look down and turn the key, it fucking jumps. Oh no, dude. <laughs> I was like, we were literally just joking because we're going out slow because of Bad Fish's bike. And he, I'm like, well, at least no one will wreck on the way out because we've been freaking hitting it hard. <laughs> and he goes like, don't count me out. I'm the king of the parking lot wreck. Well, I guess you weren't kidding, man. Anyway, so it was dumping gas everywhere. The gas was boiling. Uh, not great. So the way that he's getting out right now, we're just going to go slow, is since uh, the float bowl was filling up so badly, basically he has to turn the petcock on, <laughs> let the bowl fill with gas as he's riding, turn the petcock off, ride it until it runs out of gas, then turn it off and on and off and on and off and on until we're out of this trail section. <laughs> by hook or by crook, baby, we'll make it out. We're starting out behind him and I haven't seen him yet. So that's a good sign. We still have nine more miles of this trail to go before we're in the clear. Is everything okay? No. Down, down the mountain? Yeah, he's okay. Oh no, holy yeah. shit. We got a bike down the mountain. Who was it? It's, uh, uh, Ralph. Ralph? Oh, fuck, dude.
Oh, we could definitely get it up with all of us. You okay, man? Okay, well that's all that fucking matters. Yeah, dehydrated, hungry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, besides the, besides the obvious, you're okay. <laughs> Okay. No, you're all good, dude. Hey, we're all gonna end up falling. We're closer than we were. It's okay. No, because the he's turning the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, you're fucking killing it, man. Look at you go. You rode your bike off a mountain. And 30 seconds later, you're riding it out. You're doing pretty good, dude. <laughs> yeah. Ready. Say, all things considered, man. Dude, and the bike looks untouched. The bike looks fucking fine, dude. We're also really close. The bike's pretty stable. If you want to just take like 10 minutes. Well, that, that was a lot, man. <laughs> Don't be hard, too hard on yourself. So, lunch. <laughs> Sounded way better now. <laughs> <laughs> if you just wanted to chill too, I think the we can get it out, man. The rest of the way. No, yeah, no worries. There's no reason you get you have to do that part. You just crash down a mountain, man. Like, take a take a knee for a second. <laughs> you know. Oh, there we go. We're so close. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Whew. Dude, you must have seen your life flash before your eyes. I thought you went down over there. I was like, oh, that's not so bad. Watch out. This is full of thorns as I'm the only person who steps into it. Dude, this is the scariest fucking part. This is never going to show up on the GoPro how steep this is or any camera. I don't think I could climb up this like with my hands and feet. <laughs> they ain't going to believe any of this shit. <laughs> They're going to be like, no fucking way. <laughs> so for real, let's really take the rest of it slow. What did I say earlier? Good thing we're going slow so nobody crashes. It's freaking two in like five minutes. <laughs> I'm going to keep my mouth shut from now on. That's a lie. I'm not going to. Well, that was quite exciting. Luckily now on our way out, we'll be going slow so no one will wreck. <laughs> and down the mountain and it still runs. Freaking phenomenal. Many people take their bespoke custom motorcycle on its maiden voyage off-road on an adventure and then throw it down a mountain. That's freaking hard as a concrete dildo right there. Well, after that adventure, I will tell you, I need some freaking lunch. Pushing motorcycles from the bottom of a ravine is hungry work. We skipped lunch yesterday, and I don't know if you've seen the size of me, but I think it's pretty obvious that I don't, I'm not in the habit of skipping lunch. Well, that was something. <laughs> Uh, now we uh, no one has a signal nobody knows what state we're in um, And we're all very hungry luckily. There was a stream down there that we cooled off in but it's a uh, it's time To make the trek back to civilization and just tell this story again and again and again Until it was something along the lines of he did an entire backflip down the side of the mountain and a bald eagle flew out of the sky With a joint in its talons and let him take a drag on it before he hit the ground amazing That's how it's gonna sound later anyway we escaped the mountain, beaten. Oh, and we're back on gravel. Well, uh, I kind of thought that we were done with this. <laughs> I guess not. Thought we were about to escape the mountain, but it looks like it's got a little more in store for us. Hmm, off the edge of this one looks decidedly more rocky than the last one. Let's not try to see if our luck holds twice. Unfortunately, issues back in Tampa forced me to have to leave the ride a day early, and I really didn't want to go. I've been having such an amazing time and been making new friends and facing new challenges and laughing. And it was really, really, truly amazing. And I can't thank everybody who came and made it a good time. I can't thank them enough, especially Tim for putting the whole thing together. But extenuating circumstances being what they were i left that night and with the intention of riding through the night and doing an iron butt all the way back to tampa but fate had other plans and <laughs> so much for getting back early and our story picks back up 
somewhere in the mountains of Virginia with a broken spoke on the side of the road. Well, there's been a lot of sketchy moments in the past few days, but one I, most of them were fun. One I wouldn't like to repeat is this one. Uh, I just had a tire blow out. I was going about 80 miles an hour, 75, 80 miles an hour. And uh, I cannot believe that I didn't go down. That was super, super sketchy. But I did manage to, I did manage to save it and get it off the road. But you know, going side to side, sideways at uh, 80 mile an hour, then off the side of the road is, uh, yeah, it's better than coffee to, to wake you up. So uh, let's see if, uh, let's see if my Fantic air pump can pump this thing back up and can find the leak. So we're up here at Black Bear Harley Davidson, and let me tell you what, man, my man Tommy here got me set up because, you, you know, when you bring a rattle trap bike in somewhere, it's always a toss up whether anybody's gonna wanna touch it or not, but they look, took one look at that thing and they go, man, we gotta get this guy back on the road. And that's the whole thing about Harley Davidson dealerships versus a lot of other places. And I know, and I ain't trying to talk mess about nobody else. I got every kind of bike you could possibly imagine from KTMs, Ducatis, Harleys, uh, and I love them all, but every time I've walked into a Harley Davidson dealership, They've always gone a little bit of the extra mile. And I'll tell you right now, Black Bear is uh, no exception, man. I appreciate you guys so much. Thanks, buddy. We appreciate it. Whew. I'll tell you, boys, out here in Virginia, West Virginia, people are always asking me, like, oh, man, what do you think about all these roads, all these elevation changes? I'm like, man, I love them on the motorcycle. Freaking amazing. Curvy roads up and down. I ain't got that in Florida. On the motorcycle, it's absolutely great. I ain't used to walking it. <laughs> I could get used to it on the motorcycle. Walking up them hills to get some breakfast at Cracker Barrel while they fix my bike up at Black Bear. I feel like I worked off the breakfast. Another incredibly bland meal at Cracker Barrel where all the food's the same color as the plate. But this meal at Cracker Barrel was spiced up a little bit. Not spiced up a little bit, it was just a little nicer because I was standing in line and the lady said, how many? I said, just me. And some little old lady behind me goes, well, it's just you. Would you like to sit with a family instead? And I said no, because that's my initial gut reaction, just to say no. And I was actually thinking about David, as in Dave and Cindy, David Tyler, and I'm like, man, if David was here right now, and if he was here with me, or if he was here by himself, he would immediately say yes. So I just, I said no, and I was like, you know what? Yes, I'll sit down. I, I would love to sit with the family. Thank you. And so I did, and I learned their story, and they're very cool. Uh, just to the grandma, uh, mom and dad and two kids and actually turns out that they raised three foster kids themselves. So I, I talked to them about forgotten angels and stuff like that. Had a great conversation and very pleasant eating with somebody who invited me to their table instead of eating by myself. And even though I just had a rear tire blowout and things ain't exactly going to plan and I had to head home early and all that stuff and that made me feel pretty good. So thanks David. I would have never done that if I hadn't met you all fixed up and well all fixed up <laughs> rideable we'll, we'll go with rideable rideable once again and ready to hit the road baby baby come on black bear harley davidson we'll call these guys a class act man you guys know my heart lives at burt's barracuda but big ups to black bear not everyone would want to mess with this bike that's for sure i was talking with the service rider and he immediately told me he goes like yeah we might not be able to do it which i expected uh, a lot of harley davidson dealerships they don't want to take in bikes that have got a ton of modifications or a ton of customization and, and i'm not talking about like engine work and stuff like that i'm talking about like this like this motorcycle they they don't always want to do it because i mean you look at the thing the liability when they start working on something that i've cobbled together myself the liability is pretty high i i get it i definitely understand not wanting to mess with it so i was fully prepared for that and uh because the same thing happened to me when i was on my xs 650 trip when the yamaha broke down what literally the exact same thing that happened here happened to the yamaha uh, i took it in and they were like man we really can't put a hard tail yamaha in our lift and take it in and have the liability for that and understand and they but they did let me borrow uh they did let me borrow a scissor jack and take the rear tire off myself and just changing the tire that they'll do i was fully prepared to do that but they went ahead and hooked it up without me saying anything about the youtube channel because you know i can always sit there and try to big dick it and be like well i'll put you in a youtube video but i didn't have to and uh that 
to me, that means a lot. That was super cool. They said they talked to the owner, they talked to the service manager, and everyone was kind of unsure whether they wanted to do it or not. So they left it up to the techs. And they said, okay, the techs want to tackle it, we'll say okay. And the techs were like, hell yeah, dude. Every single one of the techs is like, we want to build a sports dirt bike too. So they're like, of course we want to do it. And I, that was super, super cool, man. With that, And then of course I was like, hey, you know, let me put you in the YouTube video, but they did not know about the channel before that. And I thought that was, that was worth noting. I wasn't wearing my camera because I was trying to make some time back to Tampa. And I, even though it was absolutely gorgeous riding through Virginia and West Virginia, even on the highway, I just was trying to make time, so I don't have me losing it at 75 miles an hour on film, but I'll tell you, that'll wake you up. And like I said, it's the second time it's happened to me, which kind of bugs me out. Like jumping on a bike where you lost the rear tire and fishtailed across a highway at 75, 80 miles an hour and somehow managed to get into a stop in a ditch without pitching yourself off and breaking your head open. That will make you just a little wary when you get back on the bike. Now that happening twice on two different bikes with spokes, on and I've only ever been on two road trips on bikes with spokes, that'll make you a little wary of spokes in general. So I don't, I think it's probably me though. I think it's, uh, I need better suspension in the rear. I'm already really heavy. And also it's just, I think probably what really messed me up is I need to take this whole pre-flight check thing really seriously, especially when you're doing off-road stuff. You know, being a street rider, a lot of times you don't take it as serious, even though you should. Doing stuff like checking the spokes and going over the bike and giving it a once-over before you take off, especially after I've been ripping ass off-road and bottoming it out and freaking taking all these trails. Shame on me for not really going over the bike and checking things out before I hit the road. I should have done that. So I'm gonna go ahead and chalk that one up to I need new rear suspension for sure, but I really, really, when I'm doing this off-road stuff, I really gotta give this bike a once-over and check it out because I think I probably could have spotted that before it became a problem. Next time on the Shade Tree Surgeon Channel. What's up, Brito? Shade Tree Surgeon here, and I am currently on the side of the road with a broken down motorcycle. It's been a couple hours of much contemplation and pondering the manner of things out here in the Dang, I broke down in the Virginia woods on my motorcycles, and I got to smoke weed with Sasquatch. Talk about someone saving a damsel in distress, baby. The night in shining six inch heels, baby. <laughs> Crying on the side of the road, you were pretty composed. Not, not that you would have seen. I got all, I got all the tears out before you got there, all right? <laughs> I cry in private. All right, y'all. I am back in Tampa. No, I don't have my Sportster here. My Sportster is still in Virginia. What you have is a new wheel and a new tire. I have a plan. Even though it didn't make it back right now, I want old dirty bastard to make it back. I want it to finish the trip on its own two tires, not two feet. So the plan right now is to fly Delta. I'm gonna go ahead and check that wheel as my luggage. I don't see why they wouldn't let me do that. I guess there's only one way to find out. I'm just gonna show up to the airport with my ticket and that wheel and tire in my hand and just see what they say.